really, really good actors, and you read the script, but uh, you have like a, a, a little podium, you know, and, um, and if you're not in the scene, you just sit down. And, and, and people seem to really love it. We sell out every time we do it. And, uh, you know, like we just did Angels in America, mm -hmm. and I played Roy Cohn, and, 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 and you're really, you're, you're, you're acting your pants off, but you've got the script right in front of you, and you're not making entrances and exits, and there, you know, there's no wardrobe to speak of. And you only do basically, uh, it's usually one reading, and uh, that's it. So that, I really love doing that. Yeah. Yeah, it is fun. Getting, um, Go ahead. I guess I'm getting a little lazy in my old age. I just don't want to work that hard. <laughs> Well, at least you're still working. That's the good thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, like everybody, like every actor, I have good years and, and bad years. I had a couple of years I was working so much I actually got ill. Oh no! Uh, I got um, I got so exhausted that I got uh, vertigo. And one night, I, I uh, one day I couldn't uh, go on stage. Um, what was this thing? King of Diamonds. Uh, um, I was doing a play and and. Uh, I woke up that day and I could hardly stand up. I had such bad vertigo and I went in and the assistant stage, I was going to try, but the assistant, uh, not the assistant, the stage manager said, uh-uh, I'm sorry, we can't let you go on because <laughs> you could pass out in the middle of the play. So uh, we had a, uh, there was a matinee and I remember getting in my car and it was the first time I'd ever missed a theater performance. And I got in my car and I started driving off and I could see the lineup right around the theater, and I thought, I can't believe I'm driving away with all those people about to go into the theater and, and you know, and see me. But um, I had to drive home, and I got so, I was so out of it that I had to pull over at one point, climb the guardrail, and I lay down and passed out. No. <laughs> That's uh, So I thought, you know what, maybe you're working a little too much. So, but then uh, the following year, I hardly worked at all. And I remember calling my agent and uh, I got his assistant on the phone. And I said, uh, uh, is Michael there? And he said, no, uh, no, he's not there. You want to leave a message? And I said, yes. Would you tell him I'm still an actor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody's calling me anymore. I'm still here. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So this year has been a nice year. It's been, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm active, but I'm not so busy that I'm going to, you know, pass out. <laughs> yeah, me too. I keep busy with my radio show, and occasionally I'll get yeah. voice acting roles. But it's been a good year for yeah. me too so far. Yeah. My next question is, do you? what is your advice to people who want to get into acting? What is your advice to people who chose the career you did? Well, of course, things have changed considerably yeah. from uh, when I was an actor. Um, uh, so I can only speak from what I would recommend. you, you got to get an agent, first of all. You must get an agent. <laughs> so what we used to do, and I don't know what they do now, but uh, first of all, um, I would knock on every door possible and you know talk to every agent and... and, and and just insist on that. Uh, what we used to do is we would put on a play and invite agents to come and see it. Uh, and when they're looking, uh, you know, uh, then you have an opportunity there that they might see you work and think you're really good and come in. But nowadays, I guess, uh, you know, with everything being online, you could probably, uh, I would certainly do a demo tape. You know, pick something, pick, pick a, do, do like a three, four minute um, a demo and, um, and send that to as many agents who might accept it. Uh, and also, um, I would say, uh, meet as many actors that are uh, actually working as possible so that, uh, you know, somebody might be able to say, you know what, I, I think you've got something. Like, for instance, I have a, a, a friend right now. Uh, he, he's not a professional, but he does remarkably good voices. And, and he happens to know an actor, that being me, and I said, you know, really, if you're good enough, you could do this professionally. Let's put a tape together, and I'll take it to my agent. And it comes down to that old thing, you know. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. So, you know, you figure out, you, if they won't let you in through the front door, you go in through the back door. If they won't let in, you in through the back door, go in through the basement door. But you must get an agent. That's first and 
foremost because uh, producers and directors are not going to call you at home. Uh, you know, they're going to, it's always going to be a, a, a breakdown that they send to the, the agents. And that's how they cast. So you got to, you've got to get an agent. So you focus on that first, I would say. And then let the agent do that part of the, the rest of the work for you. Yeah. And theater is a good theater is a good way to do that. Is uh, you know, uh, there's a good opportunity uh, to invite people if you're in a play or anything. Uh, and they have open casting calls sometimes where you don't you don't even have to necessarily be a member of the union. And you, any opportunity you have to audition for any role, whether you like the role or not, go and audition for it. Just get on stage, get seen. Uh, that's my advice. Make sure somebody sees you. Yeah. So not to drive down the road and guess, hey, I bet there's a good actor at that house. Let me go knock. That ain't going to happen. <laughs> yeah, you have to get your work out there, a demo tape or... Yeah, you've got to get it out there. You've got to be seen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr. McGrath... Do some interviews. Pardon? I said maybe do some interviews, like on a radio show. <laughs> with somebody like named Trey Olds. <laughs> Yeah, this interview show is fun to do. I've been doing it for six years, and I've talked to, I don't know, almost a, probably over 100 actors. <laughs> and Yeah. It's fun. It really what, is. What's the, best, what's, the, what's the best answer you ever got to that question? What's your advice for young actors? What, what's your best uh, answer that you got from that? Um, you know, like what you just said, get your work out there and... If you really enjoy it, you know, don't give up, you know, don't quit. There are times where you know, you'll get that, discouraged. That's a good one, too. That's a good one, too. Never give up. Yeah. And enjoy it. If you enjoy it, you know, enjoy it. And if you have the passion for it, you know, keep at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you don't have a passion for it, do something else. Yeah. <laughs> and another good piece of advice is, you know, have a backup plan, you know, have another job ready or a backup plan ready in case. <laughs> yeah, this. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr. McGrath, it's been a pleasure talking to you and hearing about your career, and thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. I, I'm glad we finally got to do it. Me too. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, Trey. Thank you. Bye-bye. And that was actor and voice actor Mr. Derek McGrath. Thank you very much for listening. Join us tomorrow at 2 p.m. our time, Central Time, when I interview singer and musician Mr. Willie Rainwright. Thank you very much, and God bless you all.